Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, December 19th, 2023 Select Board meeting. The entire board is present. Town manager, town clerk is here via Zoom, and members of the public and government are here as well. Can we please stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, approval of our December 5th, 2023 meeting minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Abstain. All right, foreign and abstention there. All right. First public comment. <laughs> Name and address, please. Allison Hurley, 9 Merrick Street in Berwick. Um, okay, so I have kind of like a multifaceted issue, so bear with me. Um, um, so, you know, we own the Bad Wolf Butcher right across the street. And since even before we opened, we knew parking was probably going to pose a bit of an issue. Um, our spot in particular is kind of vulnerable to the parking issue because one side of our store has um, parking that is used for tenant parking for the business next door. Um, although I don't really understand that because it's a town road, so I do want to talk about that. But um, And then our front, we only have about two spots like directly in front of our store. So it poses a few issues. We've had issues with people that need handicap accessibility um, and can't find a spot right there. We've had people that just have to drive by every night because there are no spots right there. Um, so Corner Point obviously has patrons that stay a little bit longer, upwards of three hours plus. Um, and now our newest tenant, Domino's, is taking up a lot, a lot of parking, which is obviously great for them, <laughs> um, but it's, really creating a lot of congestion and the spots that are being taken up are mostly right from the curb directly in front of our spot the one in front of that and the one in front of that so like our front three um, we have spoken to the manager and they're super friendly but it seems like they have like just endless um, I've seen at least like 15 different delivery drivers at this point um, and I just don't think it's getting relayed so anyways um, what we're proposing, because initially we had wanted to ask for two 15-minute parking spots in front of our store, um, but that's not going to remedy the issue of delivery drivers because they only sit there for a couple minutes. So what we are proposing now is that we have two spots in front of our store designated specifically to Bad Wolf Butcher. Um, yeah, that's our hope. We want to have it as exclusively parking for our store. Um, Handicap accessibility wise, we really do need two spots for people to be able to shop and have access. Um, yeah, that's the hope. Do you need anything else from me? I have talked to a lot of the business owners downtown too. Corner Point's fine with it, West Wellness is fine with it. Um, really, the only remedy for the congestion downtown is going to be either designated per business or like for that road next to ours to be alleviated for public use. You're talking about the one that goes between Bad Wolf? Yeah, and there's like back, seven back spots street. that yeah. are being given. Yeah, I don't really understand that because it is an LLC. Like it's technically a business is parking. They're using it for tenant parking, which is the owner is an LLC. So I can I can definitely see the need for more. Uh, as the downtown gets busier and busier, a need for some more designated handicap spots. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, really in front of the town hall, and that little spot is the only place. Mm -hmm. So I can definitely see that, but I'm not quite sure about the whole two spots exclusive to bed with Butcher because then Domino's is going to want that, then the, the dental's going to want that, and then you're not going to have enough spots. And how do you monitor that? Um, I mean, the police department is busy enough. That, I mean, we don't have parking enforcement. Mm -hmm. So you can put a sign up that says this, but 
if there's no way, it won't take very long if people park there and don't get a ticket to realize that it's just a sign mm -hmm. without any without any teeth to back it up. Right. Um, but I do think that the you know putting a handicap spot handicap. on that side of the road yeah. is not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. I think we can definitely put this on a future agenda and have a more in-depth discussion. Invite. Dominoes, the other businesses, yeah. Bad Wolf, I'm uh, not Bad Wolf, uh, the, the brewery to come yeah. in and talk about it yeah. um, and see if there's a solution that, um, that most people can agree on that, mm -hmm. that the town can facilitate. Um, yeah, I think that's something we can definitely work on. Okay, and then kind of piggybacking off of this is something that I've been in conversation with a few different people in town about, including like some of the people that were behind the um, new code I think it's like one of the page 67 something like that of our land use ordinance 62 section 7.13 uh, about backlit signage so when we're driving down the main street of our town right now we're literally just seeing domino lighting domino lighting domino light on all of these cars um, and to me that's business signage so again I think it should be delivery drivers being off the main drag of the road there's plenty of parking in the side parking lot where we're not seeing it on our main road um, and I do think it falls under that ordinance. So. Okay. We will have a, a future agenda item about it, and you will be notified. I promise you. Okay. Can I go? Yes. You may okay. Go. Thank you for your time. <laughs> no, you get to stay Sally. Whole meeting. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're more than welcome to stay. Bye. <laughs> Thanks, Sally. Have a good night. James will plan on something in the near future and um, see if we can get some information from um, everybody. Yeah, great great works. Well, the, you know about what the uh, you know what what their parking situation is actually like because honestly i don't know what it's once you pass into that whole complex i don't know what the, the parking situation is so maybe some timing around when parking's going to open up yeah yeah because yeah. May, maybe there is something that is temporarily there that can help the businesses that are already there while there's nothing in the back but then once right. that back opens up we might see that just need maybe a extension. sign to let people know they can park you know, there you know what i mean yeah just but, can we also look at the handicap? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But that, I think that, that was a great point there. Yeah. Well, yeah. Maybe we could just get, and I don't care if it's for Bad Wolf or any other end, but at least one additional spot just somewhere on that side. And since we're, while we're at it, possibility of changing the parking from nose to front to angled, possibly. I'm not sure if that's something that we can do or. Depends on the width of the road. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I, I think so that's, that's, that's what, that's what I mean. So. Too. Something to look into. Right. Any other. Public comment. I just gave James a lot more homework. Thank yep. <laughs> That's his job. He gets the homework. Um, all right. No public hearings. No reports of committees. Reports of departments. All right. Uh, the planning board has four openings. Four openings, and there's five people. Five people. Four for reappointment, and one looking for appointment. Is that right, James? Yep, they're correct. We have four openings, and there's five seeking appointment. Okay. And we have one person here. We should let him speak. Yes, please. <laughs> well, I was more I was more looking for the person who's looking for appointment, not reappointment. But you know. Hi, Michael Larue, two, uh, two thirty two sixty three Pine Hill Road. Um, this will be my third term if I get voted in. So, I'm presently the chair of the planning board. Um, I enjoy doing it as much as anyone can do. <laughs> Glutton for um, punishment. Yeah, exactly. Um, no, just trying to do my part for the town. Well, trying to be neutral. On what do you find the most challenging? Um, I'd have to say it's just coming together with differences of opinions and finding that the land use is black and white and you have to see it like that and you have to be impartial to everything other than what a butter's opinions are and there's a balance between the developer's rights and and the individual's rights and what neighbors think is what's okay and what the developer thinks is okay and what the town thinks is okay and trying to blend that all together <laughs> and find something that's like in the middle ground, that's probably the most difficult thing. <laughs> but it, it's all right. I don't mind it. <laughs> well, as chair, 
Well, you would have the greatest insight. We have Paul, Jerry, and Phil also seeking reappointment. Um, how have they been doing? Good? Well, like Mike and I talked about a little while ago, is attendance-wise, mm -hmm. sometimes they fluctuate on consistencies. I mean, I understand having another job, it's definitely tough trying to find the time. Um, have you ever had to not have a meeting because of poor attendance? No, but we have had to not have a site walk because of lack of attendance. And I was the only one that showed up to the <laughs> site walk. <laughs> it's like in football where everybody moves but the center, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's been two different site walks that we've had three and not a full quorum. Um but we, I still hosted the site walk. If there's one missing from a quorum, that's okay. But if it's just me going there, it, can't do it. I think I've only missed like two meetings this whole year. <laughs> well, wasn't there one that missed like six? Paul's missed six. Phil has missed five. Mm-hmm. When we had Tammy, the town planner, when absences were going higher, we ended up having a meeting separately with a few of the a few of the um, planning board members about letting them know that it's it's I'm pretty sure the policies it's quarterly. If you miss a certain many, you run the risk of losing your position. Um, that's, haven't had that lately. Well, uh, speaking from, you know, being, being appointing and reappointing people for a long time here, um, I, can, I can only think of one other time when we didn't reappoint somebody to one of the boards. Um, and I actually, I regret that afterwards. It was for the uh, uh, sewer district. Yeah, we didn't reappoint one of the trustees who had been there, and I regret that ever since. Um, we have not had any egregious fault from anybody that's been on the board. As, as far as missing you know, six meetings out of 22. a minimum of 24, you know, is... Um, well, 22, because... 22. 22. The two yeah. optionals, yeah. yeah. <laughs> is, um, um, but, you know, is... And the the fifth person, Dan Hook, who was looking for appointment, is not here. Correct. Um, I, is, uh, he I, ta I, ta I talked to, to the town manager earlier about this, um, and I told James to let Dan know that typically we do reappoint, but he had the opportunity to come, and he was invited. Um, is, but... Um, I'm going to start by uh, moving to reappoint Mike LaRue to the planning board. And I just want to make one more comment. Is, is before I started running for selectman, I served as an alternate on the planning board, mm. and I decided this was easier. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I moved to reappoint Mike LaRue to planning board. No second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Awesome. Thank you, guys. You may continue your fine work. <laughs> Um, James, can we appoint these as a block? Terry, can we appoint these as a block? No, or do you have to do it one at a time? Yeah. Typically, yeah, that's Patty up there. No, I'm sorry. Why did I say Terry? I'm Patty. Brain's mush. Oh. You can do, if you're reappointing, just name the names and do one motion. Okay. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> uh, I'll make a motion that we appoint Paul, how do you pronounce it, Amatucci? Amatucci. Yeah. Jerry Graybill, and Phil Roy for reappointment for the planning board uh, with a term ending in December 2026. No, I forgot to get Mike, but I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? All right. All right, before I move on, Mike, I have a challenge for you for this year. Or for the next two years. <laughs> <laughs> you mean three years? 
looking forward to it for the next three years. <laughs> <laughs> um, if, if we can, please stress the importance of attendance. That's yeah. one thing I, I do think. And again, we all we all miss it. We all do it. Um, I, I, I would like to see just if they cannot make the meeting, at least do the homework on the meeting. Yeah, I've and watch the meeting. Watching every yeah. meeting that I have watched mm -hmm. since I've been sitting here. There have been times where board members have openly just said, hey, I was not here at this meeting. I don't know what's mm -hmm. going on. And I think at least on two occasions, we've actually pushed the developer back mm -hmm. to the next meeting because they didn't feel that they had enough information to make a vote that night. Okay. Um, I, I do think that is something that we have to we do have to consider mm -hmm. um, not just the abutters' rights, but the developers' rights too, and the right. way that they're paying for those people that are coming down to invest in our town. Right. Um, <clears throat> the second thing, and, and, and I hear it a lot, is, and yes, the planning board is volunteers, and I appreciate all the work they do, how they have to keep the mind of the people when the developers come in from, and, and yes, I get that. They do also have to remember that the land use ordinance is voted in by the townspeople, and that is the voice of the townspeople as well, yeah. not just the abutters. And, and I just think that that is something that, as you guys talk about land use ordinances, and I, and I appreciate that they're being talked about every every meeting, because I do think there's things that should be changed and should be open discussion, and, and as we evolve as a town, there's going to be things that we want to work through. Um, just keeping that in mind that it's all the townspeople. And, right. and the right of the town is what we have to sit as any governing body that we can take. Right. So, and welcome again for your next turn. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, next we have the Board of Appeals. Three openings, three members seeking reappointment. I'm sure we all watched the wonderful video of the recent Board of Appeals meeting. <laughs> I know that you did. I know that you did. And I did too. <laughs> well, there's only three views on the video. <laughs> now, um, I think I'm the third. <laughs> it's, I get it's to not, see Terry edit it. It's uh, not I, very, say, I know Tom watches them through all the It's time. not a very glamorous job. They only meet no. quarterly, right? Yeah. It's once every yes. quarter? Yeah. Unless it, and, unless and the most recent speed. one was actually to piggyback, I think, the previous one. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, but... Uh, we have three people that want to do it and have been, have been doing it. And they want to continue. So. I'll move that we reappoint Ashton Cotton, Rick Ingalls, and Ernie Wood to the Board of Appeals for term ending December of 2026. I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Okay, we have a Recreation Commission reappointment, Drew McCormack. Not here. <laughs> Not hiding under the seats. Um, I didn't know if you were speaking on her behalf, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll make a motion. We reappoint Drew McCormick to the Recreation Commission for term ending 2024, December Second. 2024. <laughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor? All right. All right. Um, no unfinished business town manager report. The lobby has been painted and the HVAC improvements have been installed. Public Works has been hard at work removing some old obsolete piping. It's starting to look pretty different um, in the lobby and it's been a long time coming. It's pretty encouraging to start seeing some progress. We have a RFP for banking services posted the bid opening is January 4th, and that will be on the agenda for January 16th. The revaluation process will begin in the spring of 2024 and will be completed by mid-summer 2024. New values will take effect for the fall of 2024 tax bills. MRI will be publishing two informational flyers to our website soon. This will also be cross-posted on our social media and to the bi-monthly as well, as well. And the last piece I have is the transfer station will be closed Christmas Eve, Sunday, December 24th, and it will be open as usual Tuesday the 26th, and will be open uh, to make up for the last day on Thursday the 28th. Um, so you're encouraged to use both of those days and spread out your Trash. <laughs> <laughs> Come 
I know that I went to the dump today, so I don't have to worry about it this weekend. So, you know. Completes my report. Any questions for the town manager? All right. I need the green folder there. Green folder. Oh, All right. Uh, I'm down here, sorry. The, the psych board communications, two channels are ceasing operations on December 31st for, in Comcast. DW Deutsch and Z Living channels. I don't know what those are. I don't think anybody does either. That's, 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 that's a that's a <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, accounts payable. All right. We have a payroll warrant number 40 from December 14th in the amount of $84,186.06. Accounts payable warrant number 41 from December 19th, 2023, in the amount of $398,575.52. And payroll warrant number 42 from December 21st, 2023, in the amount of $86,201.71. I make a motion that we pay our bills. Second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Um, all right. New business. Bid results for the stormwater outfall. This is the outfall seven, and it just helps to establish the Great Falls Park. Been a few years in the making. Um, we had three bid results. We had Curtis Earthworks come in at one million seven hundred twelve thousand nine hundred twenty-one. Northeast Earth Mechanics at one million six hundred ninety thousand four hundred twenty-five. And the low bidder, Gorham Sand and Gravel, at one million two hundred forty-eight thousand five hundred four. These bids were evaluated by our engineer consultant Mike Zarva at SLR Consulting. And therefore, I make the recommendation to award the bid to Gorham Sand and Gravel. When would um, when would the uh, improvement start? We would we would try to get it started as soon as possible. Spring of uh, twenty four. Twenty four. We can we can start some landscaping, and there might be some lead times on some of the larger equipment. But um, to go along with that project is the sidewalk down Mullen Street. We will make preparations for conduit and ornamental lighting as part of our lighting plan. Um, and it's got a pretty extensive landscaping plan to go along with it. And then there's major stormwater improvements along the road up Mullen Street. Well, it, it also goes up Mullen Street and then all the way up past that to uh, what is it, up to Merriam Street or something? First, up to First Street and First Street, Copeland. Yeah. Yep. yeah, so we're looking at quite an extensive improvement of all along that yep. area. Um, I'll make the motion that we award the bid, the, the grant to Gorham Sand and Gravel for the amount of $1,248,504. Second, that. Any further discussion? I think it's interesting that the one that's the furthest away is the lowest bid. <laughs> yes. so. I know. Well, I'm familiar with the company, the good company, so. Yeah. So, so if it's vetted by the engineer, then no. yeah, <laughs> I'm going to default to that. Yeah, exactly. As long as the engineer doesn't go, we should not be using this yep. company. Then I'm pretty sure their expertise are on the. I'm also happy part. to report that this budget item is on budget, will be on, <laughs> under budget. And it's fully funded by two grants. That's awesome. Yeah. Terrific. Nice. All those in favor? Bid awarded. All right. That's done. That's done. Do, 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 do. Um, no quick claim deeds. No abatements. Second public comment. All right. Um, we do have an executive session for a discussion of personnel, so we will be going to that. We will not be uh, making any decisions. We, we also have to... Josh here for other other business. Oh, oh, well, oh, I haven't oh, got oh. business. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Don't worry about that. <laughs> that sorry, I'm jumping the gun. Don't, <laughs> don't jump my gun. Thanks, Mike. Have a nice. Thank you. Um, so we won't make any decisions after before that. 
Um, any other business non-agenda <laughs> items? Good evening, everybody. I apologize. I failed to follow the process properly, but I was a sure that I can squeeze in here in this section of the agenda tonight. I just wanted to check in. Um, I apologize. I wasn't here at the last meeting. I know James got to break the news about the playground being open. That's great. Um, nice and well attended. A um, couple things on the agenda or on the, the list that we're working on. Um, we are working on a before and after care school care program. Um, we know that that is a huge need in our community and we are in the process of getting the license. We currently uh, have a, a license for summer camp, but not for a before and after school care program. So we're working on those hoops, jumping through those hoops. It is a bit of a paperwork process. Um, and we're also going to look into getting back into the subsidy program. Um, a lot of misinformation that was just, just misinformation. So we've talked, had Zoom meetings and personal meetings with the right people. We're getting more comfortable with that process and we're going to uh, hopefully if we get approved, go back to the subsidy program for summer camp and for before and after school care. Um, we're also looking at something additional for the playground, which is a communication board. I don't, anybody, does, does anybody not know what a communication board is? Why don't you tell us anyway? Okay. The <laughs> communication board is an interactive uh, board resource for, let's say, just a nonverbal uh, individual. It's got pictures, it's got letters, it's got words that they can just point to with their friends, make gestures, and it just kind of opens the doors for differently abled uh, folks to communicate in a fun, playful environment. So I've engaged a company um, to build a 10-foot um, post-mounted communication board. haven't really determined where on the playground I want to put it yet, but we'll figure out where it makes sense. Probably the, easy, the, the, the initial, the, the egress that makes sense when people walk into the park, kind of in between the basketball court and the pavilion, that seems to be the most well-traveled path into the playground. And lastly, the money that we spent on drainage for the playground is working. I went up and took a short video for anybody who wants to see it yesterday of the water draining out from the playground yesterday. And it was impressive. That water, there was a lot more water coming through that pipe than I would have imagined. Um, but it was moving. So money well spent. Thank you all for that. The um, before school, after school, is that going to require staff? Yes. Is that staff, how is that staff going to be allocated? Uh, essentially, how are we going to pay for the staff? Is the, are we... Um, is it, is it going to be through the subsidy program, or is it going it's a, to be? It's a it's a fee service okay. or service, so the money's collected for the service would go towards staffing. Okay. Um, we're looking at about four, including Shannon and I, um, total for total, not additional, and we're looking at capping it at about fifty. Okay. Um, so two additional, and we're looking at twenty hours a week for before and after care. Two hours on the front end, two hours on the back end, maybe a little bit more on the back end. Um, we we'll have to figure that out. So minimal staffing impact, but we can cover it. Just want to make sure we're planning ahead. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Because <laughs> budget season is right around the corner. No, I'm not going to. I don't want to develop a program that sinks. It wouldn't yeah. do that to us. Um, any other questions for the rec director? I was just say, you have an estimated uh, like time of day for before or after? Six in the morning. Um, we're trying to host that here no impact to staff um, we'd have to find a maybe an after-school location we've got a couple of places in mind um, during uh, open hours not ideal um, so we're looking at school some school my son gets home about 245 so we're looking at like a 230 three ish time to about six we get people home so that's no, I, that's I, all no, stuff I, that I we're still factoring great, yeah I think it's a great idea I mean I know residents in town that you know right now they're shipping their kids off to Stanford for, for Y care right? yeah it's probably pretty much probably the closest thing that we have that's it a is. program around here yeah uh, and then I think having something <laughs> yeah I so I think having something in town would, would be a huge asset to, to the families in town. yeah it is and if, it, it, if we just we could triple what we're looking to do and still and fill it up I'm confident we could fill it but we just we're gonna start a little bit smaller is there any possibility of working with like the school in terms of their locations yes 
Yep, okay. we're looking at the, the, the middle school. Yep. We're going to talk to them. Um, the Husseys got their white care program, um, so we're going to talk to the schools. But, for example, like vacation week in February, we're looking. That's kind of a goal to start. We're looking at the church. We haven't talked to them, so I hope they're not listening. <laughs> but we're going to ask. We're going to get their input and see if there's there's space available there um, for for when school is out. We school's not an option because that's when they do work. Um, yeah. So right. during school, it is an option. We just got to have those. Definitely, definitely needed. My granddaughter goes to South Park, and they use the after school like an hour and a half till parents get home from work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, white care is full, huge waiting list. Yeah. So. All right, terrific. Any other questions? Yeah, how many hours a week would it take away from what you do now? You said you went sharing, you're going to do a couple other people. Yeah, that's, it, it, I, my day starts between 7 and 8, so it would be an additional hours in the building. Um, depending on staffing, it could be very minimal. Depending on staffing, it could be four hours a day. <laughs> yeah, that's to be determined. That's we'd like to set it up with no impact, but staffing is, is going to be an issue, especially when you're offering such short amount of hours. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good idea. All right, Jimmy. Thank cool. you very much, Josh. Thank, Thank you. All, you. All right. Does anybody else have any other business, not agenda items? No. Thank Thank you. Um, I just want to comment on. Uh, you know, the road crew and the emergency personnel responding yesterday during the storm. Um, I saw them all, all day long, back and forth. I know there was some disruption in town, but not terrible. Um, and then the other thing I want to do is just wish everybody a happy holiday. We're not going to see them until next year, so. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas, happy Hanukkah, happy New Year, everything in between. Yep. Um, yeah, uh, we definitely didn't get it nearly as bad as some other communities in Maine. TikTok is awash with buildings, trees, oh, cars, bridges, yeah, roads. Yeah. Uh, all of Farmington was apparently yeah. underwater for a period of time. So, um, yeah, fortunate. we definitely didn't get the worst of it, but um, we definitely had a lot of, you know, we roads were closed, trees were down, places lost power, <clears> and uh, it was only for a short amount of time for most places, so I think we did... Uh, as a community, handled it very well. Right. Um, so, yeah, good job to them. Um, happy holidays, and I make a motion that we go into executive session under title 14056A personnel. I will second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Good night to the public. Good night. Good night. Happy New Year. Yeah, I never lost power yesterday. No, I